The sacred texts of Judaism, Christianity, and Islam form a rich tapestry of faith woven through centuries of human history. These texts, revered by billions across the globe, offer profound insights into the nature of God, the human condition, and the meaning of life. From the ancient scrolls of the Torah to the bound pages of the Bible and the calligraphed verses of the Quran, these scriptures have shaped civilizations, inspired art and literature, and provided solace and guidance to countless individuals. These three faiths, though distinct in their doctrines and practices, share a common spiritual heritage rooted in the belief in one God. Abraham, revered as a patriarch in all three traditions, embodies this shared ancestry. His willingness to follow God's call, even when it meant sacrificing his own son, serves as a testament to the power of faith and the importance of obedience to divine will. The Old Testament, the foundation of both Judaism and Christianity, unfolds with the book of Genesis, a profound account of creation and humanity's early relationship with God. It recounts the familiar stories of Adam and Eve, Noah's Ark, and the Tower of Babel, establishing essential themes like the order of the cosmos, the consequences of sin, and the enduring covenant between God and humanity. Genesis introduces us to the patriarchs, Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, whose lineage forms the very bedrock of the Israelite nation. Following Genesis, the narrative shifts to Exodus, a pivotal book that recounts the Israelites' dramatic liberation from slavery in Egypt. Led by Moses, chosen by God to confront Pharaoh and demand freedom for his people, the Israelites embark on a perilous journey to the Promised Land. The parting of the Red Sea, a testament to God's power and protection, becomes a defining moment in Jewish history, symbolizing divine deliverance from oppression. The journey continues through the books of Leviticus, Numbers, and Deuteronomy, collectively known as the Torah, or Law. These books detail the intricate system of laws and commandments given to Moses on Mount Sinai. From dietary restrictions and ritual practices to moral guidelines and social justice principles, the Torah provides a comprehensive framework for living a life aligned with God's will. It emphasizes the importance of covenant, obedience, and holiness as defining characteristics of the Israelite people. These early books of the Old Testament established the foundation of the Jewish faith, highlighting the importance of covenant, the consequences of sin, and the power of God's deliverance. They introduce the enduring themes of faith, obedience, and the ongoing relationship between God and humanity, themes that reverberate throughout the rest of the biblical narrative. As the Israelites, led by Joshua, enter the Promised Land, the books of Joshua and Judges narrate their struggles to conquer the land and establish themselves as a nation. These stories are marked by both victories and defeats, highlighting the cyclical nature of faithfulness and disobedience that characterized early Israel. The Book of Ruth, a poignant tale of loyalty and redemption, offers a counterpoint to the often turbulent narratives of conquest emphasizing the enduring power of faith and kinship even in times of hardship. The establishment of the monarchy, a turning point in Israelite history, is recounted in the books of 1st and 2nd Samuel, 1st and 2nd Kings. From the anointing of Saul as the first king to the reigns of David and Solomon, these books explore the complexities of leadership, the dangers of power, and the ongoing tension between human ambition and divine will. The reigns of David and Solomon, marked by both great achievements and tragic flaws, serve as cautionary tales about the nature of power and the importance of righteousness. The division of the kingdom after Solomon's death into the northern kingdom of Israel and the southern kingdom of Judah ushers in an era of political instability and religious decline. The rise of prophets, individuals chosen by God to deliver messages of warning and hope, becomes a defining feature of this period. These prophets, including Elijah, Elisha, and Amos, challenged the kings and the people to return to God, condemning idolatry, social injustice, and moral corruption. The books chronicling the era of the monarchy highlight the importance of righteous leadership, the dangers of straying from God's covenant, and the consequences of both obedience and disobedience. They also introduce the prophetic tradition, 
a vital element of Israelite faith, which emphasized the need for social justice, moral accountability, and a return to God's covenant. Section three, poetry, wisdom, and prophecy. Amidst the historical narratives and legal codes of the Old Testament, the Book of Psalms stands out as a collection of poetic prayers, hymns, and meditations, expressing the full spectrum of human emotions in dialogue with God. From songs of praise and thanksgiving to laments of despair and petitions for deliverance, the Psalms offer a timeless vocabulary for expressing the joys, sorrows, doubts, and hopes of the human heart in relationship to the divine. The wisdom literature comprising Proverbs, Ecclesiastes, and Song of Solomon provides practical and philosophical insights into the human condition. Proverbs offers concise sayings and maxims for living a wise and ethical life, emphasizing the importance of prudence, diligence, and righteousness. Ecclesiastes, a more contemplative work, grapples with the meaning of life, the inevitability of death, and the fleeting nature of worldly pleasures. Song of Solomon, a collection of passionate love poems, celebrates the beauty of romantic love and physical intimacy, often interpreted allegorically as a representation of God's love for his people. These diverse books, though differing in style and tone, share a common thread of seeking wisdom, meaning, and understanding in a complex and often uncertain world. The prophetic books, spanning centuries of Israelite history, feature the voices of individuals called by God to challenge injustice, call for repentance, and offer hope for the future. Major prophets, including Isaiah, Jeremiah, Ezekiel, and Daniel, delivered powerful messages condemning idolatry, social injustice, and religious hypocrisy. Section four, Exile, Return, and Restoration. The latter books of the Old Testament recount the tragic events of the Babylonian exile, a period of profound upheaval and displacement for the Israelites. As a consequence of their continued disobedience and idolatry, the northern kingdom of Israel fell to the Assyrians in 722 BCE, followed by the southern kingdom of Judah to the Babylonians in 586 BCE. The Book of Lamentations, a collection of mournful poems, expresses the profound grief and despair experienced during this time of loss and captivity. Yet even in exile, hope flickered. The prophet Jeremiah, while lamenting the destruction of Jerusalem, also proclaimed God's promise of eventual restoration and a new covenant with his people. This message of hope resonated through the writings of other prophets, including Ezekiel and Daniel, who envisioned a future time when God would gather his people back to their land and establish a reign of peace and righteousness. The books of Ezra and Nehemiah chronicle the return of the exiles to Jerusalem and the challenging task of rebuilding the temple and restoring the city walls. These accounts highlight the importance of community, perseverance, and faith in the face of adversity as the Israelites, inspired by leaders like Ezra and Nehemiah, work to reconstruct their lives and their nation. The Book of Esther, set in the Persian Empire, tells the story of a young Jewish woman who rises to a position of influence and courageously thwarts a plot to exterminate her people. Her story, celebrated during the festival of Purim, emphasizes the themes of divine providence, courage in the face of persecution, and the ongoing struggle for Jewish survival amidst a sometimes hostile world. Section one, the Talmud, a living tradition. While the Torah, prophets, and writings Tanakh constitute the Hebrew Bible, Jewish religious thought and practice extend far beyond these foundational texts. The Talmud, a monumental work of rabbinic scholarship compiled over centuries, stands as a testament to the dynamism and evolving nature of Jewish tradition. Comprising two main sections, the Mishnah, a compilation of oral laws passed down through generations, and the Gemara, a vast collection of rabbinic commentaries and debates on the Mishnah, the Talmud, delves into every aspect of Jewish life. The Talmud is not merely a legal code, it is a vibrant tapestry of legal discourse, philosophical inquiry, ethical teachings, historical narratives, and even folklore. It grapples with complex questions of law and ethics, seeking to apply the principles of the Torah to the ever-changing realities of daily life. The Talmud's intricate system of debate, with its emphasis on questioning, analyzing, and interpreting scripture, 
reflects the central role of study and intellectual inquiry in Jewish tradition. At the heart of the Talmud lies a deep reverence for the Torah and a commitment to deriving meaning and guidance from its ancient wisdom. Yet the Talmud also recognizes the need for interpretation and adaptation in light of new circumstances. It is through this ongoing process of study, debate and application that the Talmud has become a living tradition, shaping Jewish law, ethics and religious practice for over a millennium. The Talmud's influence extends far beyond the realm of religious observance. Its emphasis on critical thinking, ethical reasoning and social responsibility has had a profound impact on Jewish intellectual history, fostering a tradition of scholarship, debate and engagement with the world. From the medieval philosopher Maimonides to the modern Zionist thinker Ahad Ha'am, Jewish thinkers have drawn inspiration from the Talmud's intellectual rigor and its commitment to justice and compassion. Section 2 Illuminations from the Dead Sea The discovery of the Dead Sea Scrolls in the late 1940s sent shockwaves through the world of biblical scholarship, offering an unprecedented glimpse into Jewish life and thought during the Second Temple period, around 530 BCE to 70 CE. Hidden away in caves near the Dead Sea, these ancient manuscripts dating back to the last centuries BCE and the first century CE include biblical texts, sectarian writings, and religious commentaries. The scrolls provide invaluable insights into the diversity of Jewish beliefs and practices that existed alongside the dominant Pharisaic tradition, which would later form the basis of Rabbinic Judaism. Among the most significant findings are the earliest known copies of biblical texts, including nearly every book of the Hebrew Bible. These manuscripts, some of which predate any previously known copies by centuries, have revolutionized our understanding of the transmission and development of the biblical text. The scrolls also reveal the existence of various Jewish sects, each with their own interpretations of scripture and religious practices. The Essenes, believed to be the community responsible for assembling the Dead Sea Scrolls, emerge as a particularly intriguing group. Their writings, such as the Community Rule and the War Scroll, emphasize communal living, ritual purity, and a messianic expectation. The scroll's depiction of a cosmic struggle between good and evil, with a messianic figure destined to play a pivotal role in the final redemption, resonates with themes found in later Jewish and Christian apocalyptic literature. The Dead Sea Scrolls serve as a powerful reminder that Jewish identity and religious expression have never been monolithic. They offer a window into a time of great intellectual ferment and spiritual seeking, as different groups grappled with the meaning of scripture, the nature of God, and the challenges of living in a world often perceived as hostile or indifferent to their faith. Section 3, Midrash Storytelling and Scripture. Midrash, a distinctive form of rabbinic literature, embodies the Jewish tradition's profound engagement with scripture through the art of storytelling. Derived from the Hebrew verb derash, meaning to seek or to inquire, Midrash refers to a vast body of commentary, interpretation, and imaginative expansions on the Hebrew Bible. Unlike the Talmud, which primarily focuses on legal matters, Midrash delves into the narratives, characters, and ethical dilemmas presented in the biblical text, seeking to uncover hidden meanings, ethical lessons, and spiritual insights. Through parables, allegories, and imaginative interpretations, Midrash breathes new life into familiar biblical stories offering fresh perspectives and drawing connections between seemingly disparate passages. It explores the motivations of biblical characters, grapples with theological paradoxes, and seeks to make the ancient wisdom of the scriptures relevant to the lives of ordinary people. Midrash is not concerned with establishing a single definitive interpretation of the text. Rather, it embraces multiple perspectives, encouraging readers to engage in their own explorations of scripture. The rabbis who compiled the Midrash saw themselves not merely as commentators, but as active participants in an ongoing conversation with the text. They believed that the Torah was a living document, rich with layers of meaning waiting to be uncovered. Midrash, with its blend of creativity and rigorous analysis, reflects this belief in the inexhaustible depth and relevance of scripture. 
Midrash continues to inspire and challenge readers today, inviting them to look beyond the literal meaning of the biblical text and to discover its timeless wisdom, ethical guidance and spiritual depth. Its stories, parables and commentaries remind us that the scriptures are not simply ancient texts, but living words that have the power to illuminate our lives and guide us on our own spiritual journeys. Section 1, Between the Testaments Nestled between the Old and New Testaments lies a collection of texts known as the Apocrypha, a term derived from the Greek word for hidden or concealed. These books, while not included in the Hebrew Bible or the Protestant canon, hold a significant place in Catholic and Orthodox Christian traditions, offering a bridge between the two testaments and providing valuable insights into the religious and cultural landscape of Second Temple Judaism. Written primarily in Greek during the intertestamental period, around 400 BCE to 100 CE, the apocryphal books reflect a time of great intellectual ferment and spiritual seeking as Jewish communities grappled with the challenges of maintaining their faith and identity amidst shifting political and cultural currents. The Apocrypha encompasses a diverse range of literary genres, including historical accounts, wisdom literature, romantic tales, and apocalyptic visions. These texts reflect the influence of both Jewish and Hellenistic thought, as Jewish authors engaged with the ideas and literary styles of the wider Greco-Roman world. While some apocryphal books, such as 1st and 2nd Maccabees, recount historical events, others, like Tobit and Judith, present fictional narratives imbued with religious and moral themes. Despite their diverse genres and themes, the apocryphal books share a common thread of exploring the nature of faith, righteousness, and God's relationship with His people. They grapple with questions of suffering, divine justice, and the hope for a messianic age, Many of these texts emphasize the importance of piety, charity, and adherence to the law, even in the face of adversity. Though not considered canonical by all Christian denominations, the Apocrypha has had a significant impact on Christian art, literature, and theology. Stories like Judith's slaying of Holofernes and Tobit's journey of faith have inspired countless works of art and literature. Theological concepts found in the Apocrypha, such as the immortality of the soul and the importance of good works, have also influenced Christian thought and practice. Section 2, Tales of Courage and Faith. Among the most beloved and enduring apocryphal books are Tobit and Judith, captivating tales that highlight the virtues of faith, courage, and piety in the face of adversity. The Book of Tobit tells the story of Tobit, a righteous Israelite living in exile in Nineveh and his son, Tobias, who embarks on a perilous journey to collect a debt. Guided by the archangel Raphael, Tobias overcomes various obstacles, including a demonic threat, and ultimately finds love and prosperity. The story of Tobit is a testament to the importance of faith, family loyalty, and the power of divine providence. Tobit's unwavering adherence to the law, even when tested by misfortune, is rewarded by God's protection and blessings. Tobias's journey, filled with adventure and guided by angelic intervention, emphasizes the importance of courage, obedience, and trust in God's plan. The Book of Judith presents a more dramatic tale of courage and faith in action. Set during the Assyrian siege of Jerusalem, the story centers on Judith, a beautiful and pious widow, who devises a daring plan to save her people from the tyrannical general Holofernes. Using her wit and charm, she infiltrates his camp and, in a bold act of defiance, beheads him, leading to a resounding victory for the Israelites. Judith's story celebrates her intelligence, courage, and unwavering faith in God's power to deliver his people. Her actions, though unconventional, are presented as a testament to the strength and resourcefulness that can arise from faith and determination. Judith's story has resonated throughout history inspiring artists, writers, and revolutionaries with its message of courage and resistance against oppression. Section 3, Wisdom and Martyrdom. The Apocrypha also includes books that delve into philosophical and theological reflections, offering insights into the wisdom and spiritual yearnings of Second Temple Judaism. The Wisdom of Solomon, attributed to King Solomon, stands out as a prime example of wisdom literature blending Jewish and Hellenistic thought to explore themes of wisdom, justice, and the immortality of the soul. Written in elegant Greek, 
The book contrasts the path of righteousness with the folly of wickedness, arguing that true wisdom comes from seeking God and living a virtuous life. The wisdom of Solomon emphasizes the eternal consequences of our choices, asserting that the righteous will be rewarded in the afterlife, while the wicked will face judgment. It also reflects the growing influence of Greek philosophical ideas, particularly Plato's concept of the soul as distinct from the body and capable of existing after death. In contrast to the philosophical musings of the wisdom of Solomon, the books of 1st and 2nd Maccabees provide gripping historical accounts of the Maccabean Revolt, a Jewish uprising against Seleucid rule in the 2nd century BCE. These books recount the heroic struggle of the Maccabees, a priestly family who led the rebellion against religious persecution and the forced Hellenization of Jewish culture. The Maccabean Revolt, a pivotal event in Jewish history, is celebrated during the Festival of Hanukkah, which commemorates the rededication of the Temple in Jerusalem after its desecration by the Seleucids. The books of Maccabees highlight the importance of religious freedom, the courage to resist oppression, and the willingness to fight and die for one's faith. They stand as a testament to the enduring strength and resilience of the Jewish people in the face of adversity. Section 1. The Gospels, Proclamation of the Messiah. The New Testament, the cornerstone of Christian faith, centers on the life, teachings, death, and resurrection of Jesus of Nazareth, proclaimed as the long-awaited Messiah. This collection of 27 books, written in Greek over several decades, presents a radical departure from the prevailing religious and political landscape of first century Palestine. At its heart lie the four Gospels, Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John, each offering a unique portrait of Jesus, yet converging on his identity as the Son of God and the fulfillment of Jewish prophetic hope. Mark, believed to be the earliest Gospel, presents a fast-paced, action-oriented account of Jesus' ministry, emphasizing his authority over demons, his power to heal, and the growing conflict with the religious authorities. Matthew, writing primarily for a Jewish audience, highlights Jesus' fulfillment of Old Testament prophecies, presenting him as the rightful heir to the Davidic throne and the embodiment of God's law. Luke, a Gentile physician, offers a more detailed and compassionate portrait of Jesus, emphasizing his concern for the poor, the outcast, and the marginalized. His gospel emphasizes Jesus' universal message of salvation, extending beyond the boundaries of Jewish tradition to embrace all who would believe. John's Gospel, written later than the Synoptic Gospels, Matthew, Mark, and Luke, presents a more theological and mystical interpretation of Jesus' life and teachings. John emphasizes Jesus' divine nature, portraying him as the Word of God made flesh, the light of the world, and the source of eternal life. Despite their differences in emphasis and perspective, the four Gospels converge on a central message. Jesus is the Christ, the Son of God, who came to redeem humanity from sin and death. Through his teachings, miracles, death on the cross, and resurrection, he inaugurated a new covenant, offering forgiveness, reconciliation with God, and the promise of eternal life to all who believe in him. The Gospels serve as the foundational narratives of Christian faith, shaping its understanding of God, salvation, and the meaning of human existence. Section 2, From Jerusalem to Rome, following the Gospels, the Book of Acts, written by Luke as a sequel to his Gospel, recounts the remarkable spread of Christianity from its Jewish roots in Jerusalem to the far reaches of the Roman Empire. This pivotal book chronicles the formation and growth of the early Church, highlighting the transformative power of the Holy Spirit and the challenges and triumphs of spreading a new faith in a world often hostile to its message. Central to the narrative of Acts are the Apostles, ordinary men transformed by their encounter with the risen Christ and empowered by the Holy Spirit to become bold witnesses to his resurrection. Peter, initially hesitant and fearful, emerges as a courageous leader, preaching to crowds in Jerusalem and defending the inclusion of Gentiles into the fledgling Christian community. Paul, originally a persecutor of Christians, undergoes a dramatic conversion experience that transforms him into one of the most influential figures in Christian history. His missionary journeys, recounted in detail in Acts, take him across vast distances, from Antioch to Corinth to Rome, 
as he establishes churches, preaches the gospel, and engages in theological debates with both Jews and Gentiles. Acts portrays the early church as a vibrant and diverse community, marked by both internal conflicts and remarkable unity in its mission to proclaim the gospel. It highlights the challenges of navigating cultural differences, maintaining fidelity to Jewish roots while embracing Gentile converts, and confronting persecution from both religious and political authorities. Through it all, the book emphasizes the guiding presence of the Holy Spirit, empowering the church to overcome obstacles, spread its message of hope, and transform the Roman world from within. Section 3. Letters of Guidance and Revelation Comprising a significant portion of the New Testament are the epistles, letters written by early Christian leaders to address specific issues, provide theological instruction, and offer encouragement and guidance to fledgling Christian communities scattered across the Roman Empire. Among the most influential are the Pauline epistles, attributed to the Apostle Paul, which grapple with complex theological questions, address practical matters of Christian living, and offer profound insights into the nature of faith, grace, and the transformative power of the gospel. Paul's letters addressed to churches in cities like Rome, Corinth, Galatia, and Ephesus tackle a wide range of topics, from the relationship between faith and works, to the proper conduct of worship, to the challenges of living as a Christian in a pagan society. His writings, often complex and challenging, have had a profound impact on Christian theology, shaping its understanding of salvation, the church, and the ethical demands of the gospel. In addition to Paul's letters, the New Testament includes general epistles attributed to other prominent figures in the early church, such as James, Peter, John, and Jude. These letters address the broader Christian community, offering exhortations to persevere in faith, combat false teachings, and live lives worthy of their calling. They provide practical advice on matters of Christian conduct, emphasizing the importance of love, unity, holiness, and steadfastness in the face of persecution. Concluding the New Testament is the Book of Revelation, a highly symbolic and often enigmatic work attributed to John, the author of the Gospel of John. Written in a distinctive apocalyptic style, Revelation offers a visionary glimpse into the end times, depicting a cosmic struggle between good and evil, culminating in the ultimate triumph of God and the establishment of His eternal kingdom. Filled with vivid imagery, symbolic language, and powerful pronouncements of judgment and hope, Revelation has captivated and challenged readers for centuries, offering a glimpse into the ultimate destiny of humanity and the cosmos. Section 1. The Voice from Heaven In the bustling heart of 7th century Arabia, a profound spiritual transformation was about to unfold, forever altering the course of history. The Quran, the sacred text of Islam, emerged as a divine revelation to the Prophet Muhammad, a message believed by Muslims to be the literal word of God, untouched by human alteration. This revelation, experienced as a voice from heaven, marked a turning point not only in Muhammad's life, but also in the spiritual landscape of the Arabian Peninsula and beyond. Muhammad, a respected trader in Mecca, a city dominated by polytheistic beliefs, found himself drawn to solitary contemplation and reflection. It was during one such retreat, in the seclusion of a cave on Mount Hira, that he received his first revelation from God through the angel Gabriel. This encounter, a profound and overwhelming experience, marked the beginning of a lifelong mission to proclaim the message of Islam, a message centered on the oneness of God and the importance of submission to his will. The Quran, meaning recitation in Arabic, was revealed gradually over a period of 23 years in response to specific events, questions posed by believers and skeptics alike, and the evolving needs of the nascent Muslim community. Muhammad, though illiterate, meticulously memorized and recited the verses as they were revealed, ensuring their preservation and transmission to his followers. The Quran, regarded as the pinnacle of divine revelation, became the cornerstone of Islamic faith, guiding Muslims in matters of belief, worship, ethics, and social conduct. The Quran's message resonated deeply within the context of 7th century Arabia, 
a society marked by tribal rivalries, social inequality, and a spiritual void. Its emphasis on the oneness of God, Tauhid, challenged the prevailing polytheistic beliefs and offered a radically different understanding of the divine. God, in the Quran, is depicted as all-powerful, all-knowing, and merciful, the sole creator and sustainer of the universe. This concept of Tawheed, a fundamental principle of Islam, became the bedrock of Muslim faith, shaping its worldview, ethics, and relationship with the divine. The Quran, unlike narrative-driven scriptures, is structured as a collection of 114 chapters, known as surahs, each revealed at different times and addressing a wide array of themes. These surahs, varying in length from a few verses to several pages, are not arranged chronologically, but generally follow a pattern of longer chapters preceding shorter ones. This unique structure distinct from the linear narratives found in other sacred texts, invites a deeper engagement with the Quran's multifaceted message, encouraging contemplation, reflection, and the discovery of interconnected themes. The Quran's content encompasses a vast spectrum of subjects, seamlessly weaving together theological pronouncements, moral exhortations, legal rulings, historical narratives, and spiritual guidance. It addresses the fundamental questions of human existence, from the creation of the universe and the purpose of life, to the nature of God, the reality of the afterlife, and the importance of righteous conduct. Its verses offer guidance on prayer, fasting, charity, pilgrimage, family life, social interactions, and economic transactions, providing a comprehensive framework for living in accordance with God's will. The Quran's language, often described as poetic and evocative, is considered by Muslims to be miraculous in its beauty and eloquence. Its rhythmic verses, infused with metaphors, similes, and rhetorical devices, create a powerful impact on both the heart and the mind. Recitation of the Quran, often set to melodic tunes, holds a central place in Islamic worship fostering a deep sense of connection with the divine and instilling its message into the hearts of believers. The Quran, though revealed in 7th century Arabia, transcends its historical and cultural context, addressing universal human concerns and offering timeless wisdom. Its message of submission to God, the importance of justice, compassion, and the pursuit of knowledge resonates across cultures and time periods. The Qur'an, for Muslims, is not merely a book to be read, but a living guide to be studied, reflected upon, and implemented in every aspect of life. At the heart of the Qur'an's message lies the concept of Tawhid, the oneness of God. This fundamental principle permeates every aspect of Islamic belief and practice, shaping its worldview, ethics, and relationship with the Divine. The Quran emphasizes that God is one, without partners, offspring, or equals, the sole creator, sustainer, and judge of all creation. This emphasis on God's unity and absolute sovereignty distinguishes Islam from other monotheistic faiths, shaping its understanding of God's nature, attributes, and relationship with humanity. Flowing from the concept of Tawhid is the principle of submission, Islam, which entails surrendering to God's will accepting his guidance, and striving to live in accordance with his laws. The Quran portrays humanity as created to worship God, not out of compulsion, but out of love, gratitude, and recognition of his absolute sovereignty. This act of submission, far from being passive, requires conscious effort, moral striving, and a constant awareness of God's presence in every aspect of life. The Quran emphasizes the importance of living a life guided by righteousness, characterized by justice, compassion, honesty, and kindness. It condemns oppression, injustice, greed, and arrogance, calling upon believers to treat all creatures with respect and dignity. The Quran's ethical teachings, rooted in the belief in God's justice and mercy, provide a framework for building a just and compassionate society 
where the rights of all are protected and the weak and vulnerable are cared for. The Quran also highlights the reality of the afterlife, a central tenet of Islamic belief. It describes a day of judgment when all souls will be held accountable for their deeds in this life. Those who have lived righteously, placing their faith in God and following his guidance, will be rewarded with eternal bliss in paradise. Those who have rejected God's message and persisted in wickedness will face the consequences of their actions in hellfire. This belief in accountability and the afterlife serves as a powerful motivator for moral conduct, encouraging believers to live with awareness of their ultimate destiny. The Quran, while presenting itself as the final and complete revelation from God, acknowledges and affirms the existence of previous scriptures revealed to earlier prophets. It recognizes the Torah revealed to Moses, the Psalms revealed to David, and the Gospel revealed to Jesus as divine revelations, affirming their original messages of monotheism, moral guidance, and the importance of submitting to God's will. The Quran, however, also emphasizes that these earlier scriptures, over time, were subject to human interpolation, alteration, and misinterpretations, leading to a distortion of their original messages. The Quran views Muhammad as the seal of the prophets, the final messenger sent to humanity, completing and confirming the messages of those who came before him. It emphasizes that the Quran is the culmination of God's revelation, a confirmation and clarification of the essential truths revealed to earlier prophets, now preserved in their final and complete form. This understanding of the Quran's relationship to previous scriptures shapes the Muslim view of religious history, emphasizing the continuity of God's message throughout time while recognizing the Quran as the ultimate and authoritative source of guidance. The Quran recognizes a lineage of prophets sent to different nations throughout history, all carrying the same essential message of monotheism and submission to God's will. Among the prophets mentioned by name are Adam, Noah, Abraham, Ishmael, Isaac, Jacob, Joseph, Job, Moses, Aaron, David, Solomon, Elias, Jonah, Zechariah, John the Baptist, and Jesus, all revered as messengers chosen by God to guide humanity. This recognition of a shared prophetic tradition emphasizes the universality of God's message and the common spiritual heritage shared by Abrahamic faiths. The Quran's recognition of earlier prophets and scriptures fosters a sense of respect and appreciation for the diversity of religious traditions while affirming its own distinct message and role in guiding humanity. It emphasizes that the essential message of Islam, submission to the one God, has been revealed throughout history culminating in the final and complete revelation of the Quran. This understanding encourages Muslims to engage with other faiths with respect and openness while remaining grounded in the teachings of the Quran as their primary source of guidance and inspiration. From the ancient scrolls of the Torah to the bound pages of the Bible and the calligraphed verses of the Quran, the sacred texts explored in this journey offer a profound testament to the enduring human search for meaning, purpose, and connection with the divine. These scriptures, revered by billions across the globe, have shaped civilizations, inspired art and literature, provided solace in times of adversity, and guided moral and ethical reflections for millennia. Though each tradition possesses unique doctrines, rituals, and interpretations, a common thread of shared spiritual ancestry binds them together. The concept of one God, the significance of prophets as messengers of the divine, the importance of moral conduct, and the belief in an afterlife weave through these texts, revealing a shared heritage that transcends cultural and historical boundaries. These shared themes speak to universal human experiences, the awe and wonder at the created world, the struggle between good and evil, the search for justice and compassion, and the yearning for a life imbued with meaning and purpose, in a world often fractured by religious intolerance, conflict and misunderstanding, recognizing the interconnectedness of these sacred texts serves as a powerful antidote to division. By acknowledging the shared spiritual roots and common values that bind these faiths together, 
we can begin to bridge divides, foster greater understanding, and build a more peaceful and just world. As we conclude this exploration of sacred texts, let us remember that the true measure of any faith lies not merely in doctrines or rituals, but in the transformation of the human heart. May these scriptures continue to inspire acts of love, compassion, justice and peace, reminding us of our shared humanity and our responsibility to care for one another and the world we inhabit.